Praise the Lord. We rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you because you brought us together once again to shower your blessings upon our lives. We're asking, Lord, that no one will miss your blessing tonight in Jesus' name. As we bless your people, make us channels of blessings for all the people. Give us, Lord, the love for people around us to touch their lives and to bring them to the blessings of the cross. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The implication is when you believe the report, when you believe the message, the arm of the Lord, the power of the Lord will be revealed unto you. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. It's looking beyond the time of writing. It's looking at the birth of Christ, the life of Christ, the crucifixion of Christ. He was so beaten was tribes that when people saw him there was no form no beauty no comeliness because of the effect of the stripes of the whips against his body he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we heed the seat were our faces from him. He was despised, we esteemed him not. The Romans despised him. The soldiers despised him. The Israelites despised him. They said, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said, shall I crucify your king? They said, away with him, crucify him. They despised him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. The father knew about the sacrifice. And the Father laid the judgment that belonged to us on him. That's why it says that he was meeting of God and afflicted. We're talking about the cross. We're talking about what Christ did on the cross. We're talking about the shame he bore. The sorrow he took. We're talking about the suffering he went through. We're talking about the agony that Jesus Christ endured on the cross. Why? But he was wounded for transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes were healed. The prophet is telling us that Christ will come. The Son of God will come. He will come to make the final sacrifice. And that sacrifice will take our sins, our punishment, all the condemnation we should have borne. That sacrifice will come to take everything away. He will take sin away. He'll take sickness away. He'll take slavery away. 
He'll take the curse away. All we like sheep in verse 6. I've gone astray. We turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Universal provision of salvation. That nobody can say, maybe salvation is not for me. Maybe redemption cannot be mine. Maybe I cannot be saved. Maybe he did not die for me. He has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before it has shearers, and is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. They led him to Herod. They brought him before Pilate. And Herod asked him a lot of questions because he has been desiring to see him for a long time. And now the time came. And of all the questions that Herod asked, he answered him nothing. He stood before Pilate. They put a crown of thongs on his head. And his back was already bleeding because of the stripes. And then Pilate began to question him. And he answered him nothing. Don't you answer me? Don't you know I have the power to set you free and the power to crucify you? Look at this in verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of of my people was he stricken he did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth why then did he die why then was he crucified for the transgression of my people was he stricken verse 9 and he made this grave of the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. When they crucified him, they crucified two thieves, wicked people, along with him. But thank God one of them got to paradise that day. And then when he was to be buried, was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man. The graves made of the rich, yet in verse 10, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make a soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Verse 9 talks about his death because he made his grave with the wicked. And then even with the rich in his death. But then verse 10 is saying he will rise. He will rise again it yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He shall put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. That's the sacrifice. That's the death. That's the crucifixion. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. After the crucifixion comes resurrection. After the crucifixion comes new life after the resurrection. Now he prolongs his days 
and he begins to live eternally once again because it's been alive from all eternity and the cross was just a reference point to our salvation and then eternity continues with him he shall see the travail of his soul the agony when he prayed in the garden the agony when he preached on the cross, he will see the result of that travail. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. That's why he died, to bear our iniquity and to take our sins away and to take both the power of sin and the punishment of sin to take everything away therefore i will divide him a portion with the great it's risen now it was it, it was killed it was slain it was crucified but now it's risen and then after the resurrection glory after the resurrection honor after the resurrection, he has been given a name above every name that has the mention of the name of Jesus. After that resurrection, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Verse 12, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sins of the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. As we look at that chapter, chapter 53 of Isaiah, you see the blessings and the benefits of the cross. First Peter chapter 2 summarizes everything for us. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. It says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. And so you see, Peter, the apostle, summarizing everything that the prophet Isaiah had looked forward to. When Isaiah prophesied, it had not happened. Isaiah was looking at the future. When that Christ will come. When the Son of God will come. And when Jesus, the spotless one, the sinless one, the holy one, when he will die on the cross of Calvary to bear your sin, to bear the sins of the whole world. But Peter now is looking back at the cross. It has happened already. The crucifixion are taking place. The death are taking place. And the burial are taking place. And the thought they had come. He is risen from the dead. He had appeared to his own disciples. And they saw him. And now the demon began to preach. And many people already have been saved as a result of that sacrifice. Many people healed as a result of that sacrifice. And now he says, that's what he did. That's what he did. And that effect of the cross. The blessing of the cross, the benefit of the cross still continues until today because his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree on the cross that we being dead to sins. Number one, dead to sin. We identify with Christ. We are crucified with him. We are, we are dead with him. We're buried with him. We're risen with him. And now he says, we are dead to sin. And now we should live unto righteousness. And he says, by whose stripes, we are healed. 
I pray the benefits will be yours in Jesus' name. There are three things we're going to consider. Number one, praying to possess. Praying to possess the benefits of the cross. The benefits are there. The benefits are many. The benefits are innumerable. The benefits are sufficient. And for you to be a possessor, a partaker, you will pray and you will possess. Possessors are there tonight. You are one of them. Pray to possess the benefits of the cross. Number two, preaching to push the banner of our captain. He is risen. He is the captain of our salvation. He is the conqueror. He is the conqueror. He has conquered Satan and death. He has conquered all the enemies of humanity. He has conquered all the enemies of the church. Will raise up his banner. He is Christ. He is our captain. Preaching to push the banner of our captain. Number three, pre preparing or persevering. That's the word. Persevering to prepare the bride of Christ. Persevering to prepare. Now that Christ has died. Now that Christ has shed his blood. Now that Christ has gone to heaven. Now that he has gone to prepare a place for the redeemed of the Lord, for the bride, we now we are here, and you and I are to prepare perseveringly. We persevere to prepare the bride of Christ. Number one, pray to possess. Pray to possess the benefits of the cross. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, reading from verse 11, 29, 11, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, before you sent Christ to the cross, I was thinking about you. Of course, he knew the end from the beginning. He knew you will be born in this generation. He knew you will be a sinner. But he knew you could be saved and he wanted you saved. He was thinking of you. And because of you, he sent Jesus Christ. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace. There's no peace for the wicked. And the only way we can have peace is through the Prince of Peace. And there is no peace you can have outside Christ that is everlasting. But here it says, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. An expected end. At the end of every month, there is an end. At the end of every year, there is an end. At the end of every season, there is an end. At the end of life, there is an end. And everybody is expecting, when I come to the end of life, I will get to that expected place. And it says, it's giving us Christ. And it is so that you can have that expected end at the end of life. I pray that heaven you will get there. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I thought you'd say amen there. And he will hearken unto me. Can you say that? We'll answer you. We'll answer your prayer. All those things you're asking for already. There by his side. He was just expecting you that you will come. It's not something you are kind of begging like a beggar. He says, I have them for you. The expected end. 
from salvation to glorification. I have them for you, but you have to pray. You have to come and ask me. And he says, I will lack in unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Calvary has provided everything we need. Calvary has provided all the benefits and all the blessings for the soul, for the body, and for the spirit. But you must pray. Pray to possess. Pray to possess. You will possess. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 37. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 37. For thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will yet for this have provided the blessing, have provided the benefits. Everything is available. That's why I sent my only begotten son to the cross of Calvary. So that all those blessings of the cross will be yours. But then it says, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Look up here. The house of Israel missed the blessings and the benefits of the cross. The Pharisees said, We will not have this man to reign over us. The Sadducees said, We will not have this man to reign over us. Christ came. He went about healing the sick. And those that were oppressed, the Pharisees never brought the sick people to Christ. All they had was questioning, why does your master eat with the publicans? Why is he healing on the Sabbath day? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? All the benefits were there for them. And Jesus said, I would have gathered you under my protection. As the hen will gather the young ones, but ye would not. Jesus looked on Jerusalem and he wept over Jerusalem. If you had known this day what belonged to your peace, but they are hid from you, I will yet for all this be required of by the children of Israel. And then Paul the Apostle began to preach the gospel. Everywhere Paul the Apostle went, first of all, he'll get to the synagogue. He will preach the word to them. But he didn't accept. And he said, since you count yourself unworthy of eternal life, behold, we go to the Gentiles and they will receive that word of salvation. Look at that verse 37. Thus says the Lord, I will yet for this be quiet up by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. Now, if you will ask, the Lord will answer your prayer. If you will receive, the blessings of Calvary will come upon your life. Look at the blessings. The blessings are many. Let me just read a few to you. I'm looking at verse, I'm looking at verse 11. Verse 11, I will multiply upon your men and beasts, and they shall increase and bring fruit. You are going to increase. I will settle you after your old estate. You'll forget your sorrow. I will do better unto you than at your beginning. Better days have come. A better year has come. A better life has come for you in Jesus' name. But remember, 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 I, must, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. 
and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You will know that he is your Lord. Verse 25, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon them, and ye shall be clean. Ye shall be clean. The Lord will put you. He will even remove the remembrance of what you've done in the past away from your memory, away from your conscience. He'll put your heart. He'll put your spirit. He will clean up your conscience and that condemnation following after you will come to an end in Jesus' name. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. And from all your filthiness, for and from all your idols will I cleanse you. But please remember, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Verse 26, a new heart will I give you. I thought you'd say good amen. A new heart. A new heart. It has come. And a new spirit will I put within you. That means a new attitude, a new disposition, a new mind, and a new way of thinking, a new life is going. You become a new personality even tonight in Jesus' name. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. It will become easy for you to live the Christian life. When he gives you the new heart and the new spirit. And then he gives you the Holy Ghost. And then you are moving on. It's like it is the power of the wind that is propelling you and moving you along. And then all the old songs you will forget. Old songs is not an easy road. I'm going to heaven. Sometimes on the mountains, sometimes in the valley. It is not an easy road. I am not alone. I'm not alone. I'm crying and mourning. All those old songs will vanish away. The joy of the Lord will become your strength in Jesus' name. You will say, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll be glad and rejoice in it. New opportunities will come. A new life will come. A new personality will rise up. And then you will praise the name of the Lord forever in Jesus' name. Thus says the Lord, verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. The Lord says he'll do it, but you must ask. You must tell him. And you must plead with him. He will do it. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. From verse 13. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 13. It says in verse 13. Christ has redeemed us. From the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed me. From the cross of the law. You see, you must accept that. You must stop going to, you know, this one to pray for you. I have a curse on my life. That's your confession. Don't you understand? Confession brings possession. What you say, you see. Stop that kind of confession. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for you. As it is written, concerned is everyone that hangeth on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Those blessings are here tonight. They will come upon your life. The blessings of Abraham coming upon the Gentiles through the Lord Jesus Christ that we, are you one of them? 
that we are you one of us that we are you a partaker that we are you a possessor that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith lord i receive somebody there lord i receive colossians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 12 colossians chapter 1 verse 12 giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet which has made us fit which has made us worthy which has made us suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light a partaker a possessor and he makes us fit to become partakers of the inheritance who as tell me the next word tell me out loud why are we searching for what we have why are we running somewhere running to another place and we're looking at what is right there by your side it's just for the asking no bondage will be in your life no calamity will come upon your life accidents are cancelled from your life premature death cancelled from your family total deliverance total deliverance you will enjoy your christian life and you will enjoy all the benefits of calvary in jesus name who has delivered us from the power of darkness all those paths of darkness wherever they make it all those things will be cancelled and crushed out of your life in jesus name did you hear that song take my intellect and use nobody will lock up your brain Nobody will lock up the brain of your children. You know, some people say, Pastor, pray for me. I said, what's the problem? It looks like they took padlock and locked my brain or the brain of all my children. I'm spending so much money and we cannot make it. Jesus has opened that padlock tonight. <laughs> Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us translated me translated me into the kingdom of his dear son you see that we have redemption we have salvation we have deliverance we have dominion only for the asking as you ask tonight the lord will answer your prayer in whom we have you have something in whom we have somebody there you have something in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin you're not looking for it you got it ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 ephesians 3 verse 20 now when is the benefit now what is the blessing the blessing of calvary your own blessing now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us it will work in you praying to possess the benefits of the cross point number two preaching to push the banner of our captain. Our captain, that's the captain of our salvation. He died, then he rose again, and he became the captain, the conqueror. Look at this, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 9. But we see Jesus, who, who was who was a little lower, made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crouched with glory 
and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man he tasted death for you I said he tasted death for you you will not taste that death anymore in Jesus name verse 10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory many sons to glory me and one of them many sons to glory many sons to glory he'll take you out of disgrace he'll take you into grace he'll take you out of degradation he'll take you to glory he'll take you out of suffering slavery he'll take you to glory many sons to glory then look at this to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering that's the suffering of the cross we're talking about preaching to push the banner of our captain look at psalm 60 psalm 60 raise that banner the banner of christ in your life let the banner of the captain the captain of your salvation let it be flying let it be flowing let people know the banner of victory the victory of the cross the banner of conquering the conquering power of the cross let them know that that banner is in your life it's raised up it will not come down look at this psalm 60 i'm reading from verse 4 thou was given a banner to them that fear thee the banner of victory that it may be displayed because of the truth displayed show it that you have christ show it that christ died for you show it that christ won that victory for you that my beloved verse 5 may be delivered save with thy right hand and hear me but says god has spoken in his holiness i will rejoice i will divide shaken and meet out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my Lord giver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Then it goes on to Philistia. Triumph thou because of me. Somebody is triumphing there. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? The Lord is saying that because Christ has won the victory, now you can lift that banner up. Lift that banner up. Preach. Romans chapter 1. And you preach his victory. You preach his conquering power. And you tell the people you're preaching to come. Come to Christ. If you had never known victory in your life, a new kind of victory is coming your way. Yeah. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone, to everyone, this salvation will be yours. Belongs to your wife, belongs to your husband, belongs to your children, belongs to your neighbors. At the moment you tell them, don't say they will not accept, things are different now, they will accept. It says to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, hearing, for hearing. Is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. 
as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 8, you preach the word, you lift up the banner of Christ, and you let the people know that Christ has overcome, and that Christ has borne their sin, and the moment they believe, they come to salvation, and they come to righteousness. In verse, in verse 8, and what says each? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which will preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You turn away from sin, and then you come to the Lord. I cannot save myself, but I have heard you bore my sins away on the cross of Calvary, and I trust your sacrifice. I trust your substitution. I trust your sin bearing. You bore my sins away. It says, if you believe in your heart, that Christ died for you and that he rose again for your justification, you are the same for the heart. Verse 10, man believeth unto righteousness and for the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it says we are to preach that, preaching to push the banner of our captain. Write that word, push. P-U-S-H. You know, if you're going to push the banner, lift up the banner, it, it's a word of action. You must do something. You cannot just say, I appreciate the gospel. I love the gospel. I accept the gospel. Push it. Push it. Declare it. Say it. Tell people, everywhere you go, push up that banner a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Let more people see. The higher you push that banner, the more people will see that Christ has conquered and Satan is falling. And in your life, in the life of your family, keep on pushing up that banner of our captain. Push, P-U-S-H, preach. Until sinners halt. Preach until sinners halt. You preach and the sinners are still going on doing what they are doing. You preach more and the sinners are still... It's like they are not paying attention. You preach more until there is awareness. You preach more until there is conviction. You preach more until they stop. You preach more until they say, What can I do to be saved? Push, preach until sinners halt. Push, persuade until scoffers hush. You start preaching and people are jesting. You start preaching and people are making fun. And then you, you don't stop, don't stop. You push, you push that banner, the banner of Christ. And you keep on lifting it up, all those coffers that are trying to make jest of what you say, you preach until scoffers hush. Until they stop all the scoffing, keep on preaching. And you push, P-U-S-H, persevere under serious harassment. You're lifting up the banner of Jesus Christ. And then there is persecution. There is harassment. There is opposition. There is resistance. You don't stop. Don't stop. You're pushing up. You're lifting up the banner of Jesus Christ. Everybody must see. Everybody must hear. Don't allow them to shout you down. Don't allow them to shut you up. You're pushing the banner 
of Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, persevere under serious harassment. That's what it means to push. Because if you don't persevere, a little challenge, a little difficulty, a little resistance, a little opposition, a little persecution, then you go back to your corner. It doesn't work that way. You keep on persevering. You will persevere. Somebody there will push. Somebody there will push. I said somebody there will push. Persevere under serious harassment. You push, that means you preserve uncompromising, sanctified hearts. That, you know, when you preserve and you have that uncompromising, sanctified heart, the righteous is as bold as a lion. No condemnation, no guilt. Nothing that the devil will say, aha, Jesus says, I about you, are you saved? Aha, Jesus has cancelled all my curse. I about this, I about that. You preserve uncompromising, sanctified hearts. You push. Permanently uphold scriptural holiness. That's pushing. That's pushing. They dribble you here. What comes out is holiness. Somebody pushes you, wanting to make something spill out of your mouth. What comes out is holiness. Somebody pinches you. Somebody jeers about you. Somebody tries to attack you. And they're thinking that something bitter will come out. They're thinking that something too satanic will come out. They're thinking that something evil will come out. But you're pushing, you're pushing, you push, permanently uphold scriptural holiness. And now you've been, you know, you, you go out in the morning, morning cry. And then as you're going out in the morning, morning cry, and there's somebody there that has a dog in the house and sets the dog back in. So that you will not go in front of that house anymore. Anytime you get there, dog is backing, dog is backing. You say, what am I going to do? Keep on pushing, keep on pushing. You push. The gospel must be preached. And you are the preacher. I said you are the preacher. My brother, you are the preacher. My sister, dear, you are the preacher. Push. Pursue unstoppable soul winning harvest. Pursue. In this community, I'll keep on pushing. In this environment, I'll keep on pushing. I'm lifting up the banner of Jesus Christ. I am saying that Christ is greater than every problem. I am saying that Christ is greater than every sickness. I am saying that Christ is the only Savior. And even though there may be people that uh, didn't pay attention at the beginning, but when I keep on pushing, I keep on pushing, I keep on pushing, and I pursue unstoppable soul winning harvest. They will listen. I said they will listen. And next retreat, your converts will come with you to the retreat. You will not be barren. I see fruitful people there. I said I see fruitful people there. Who are the fruitful people? You'll be fruitful in soul winning. You'll be fruitful in the service of God. You'll be fruitful in your business, in your, in your community. You'll be fruitful in your family because you pursue unstoppable soul winning harvest. Push. Possess unique, sustainable hope. You have hope in the Lord. I am not laboring in vain. You have hope in the Lord. I'm not walking in vain. You have hope in the Lord. He's going to prepare a place for me. And I will be there. You push. Push up the banner of Christ's salvation. And Christ's victory. Keep on pushing. Push. Preach. Until sinners halt. Push. Persuade. Until scoffers hush. Push. Persevere under serious harassment. Push. Preserve 
uncompromising sanctified hearts push permanently uphold scriptural holiness push pursue unstoppable soul winning harvest push possess unique sustainable hope this lunch is given to you your community is given to you preach to push the banner of our captain point number three persevering to prepare the bride of Christ persevering to prepare the bride of Christ that's our calling brothers who are pastors that's our calling sisters are women leaders that's our calling youth leaders and youth workers and you know everyone even the youth believers youth for believers that's our calling a campus brethren that's our calling you're preparing the bride of Christ a children church workers this is not what we're doing we're preparing the bride of Christ and you want to make the bride of Christ more ready today than they were yesterday. Every message you give, every song you sing, every testimony you give, every encouragement you give, every work you do, what are you doing? You're doing that so that the bride of Christ today is prepared more than the bride was prepared yesterday. The church is the bride. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're reading from verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as chaste virgins to Christ. Present you as a chaste virgin. Bride unto Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Here is talking about the bride of Christ and what you do to prepare the bride of Christ. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved also loved the church and gave himself for it that ye might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Handle that word and let it cleanse the bride of Christ. Preach that word. Let it wash the infirmities and the uncleanness of the bride of Christ. Sing that word and let the words of the song and the presentation cleanse the bride of Christ. Help and counsel those women and let the help and the counseling cleanse those women and prepare them more for the coming of Christ. Advise and help and hold and uh, be an encouragement to that person there so that your words, the words of God will be washing and cleansing the people you are advising and counseling. That, verse 27, he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Let your ministry, let your influence, be that you are preparing the bride of Christ. With one hand, you are inviting outsiders to come into the grace of God, into the gospel of Christ. And with the other hand, those who are inside, the believers, the children of God, you are helping them. You are cleansing them. You are washing them. You are making them more and more ready for the coming of the Lord. We're looking at Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 6. Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. And I heard the seat were 
the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thunderings saying hallelujah for the lord god omnipotent reigneth it will reign in your life it will reign over your family reign over all your problems and then make you to join identify with him your reign with him let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife his bride has made herself ready his wife has made herself ready provide the water Provide the place, provide the soap, provide all the things that are needed by that wife, by that bride, so that she will know the water of the world is there. The faith that believes, that's there. And the place, a church building, where she will hear that word, and shall sink in the word of God. That place is there. That's what you can do. Provide the place. Provide the water of life. Provide the water of the world. Provide everything she will need. The bride. To wash herself. To purge herself. To prepare herself. For the coming of Christ the bridegroom. And to her was granted. That she should be a rich in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Prepare the bride. You will. I said you will. Would you always remember? Always remember. Always remember. Every time you have opportunity. To interact, to influence, to help, to teach, to preach, to the children of God. Always remember, the purpose is to persevere in preparing the bride of Christ. Prepare the bride. Number one, prepare, don't prevent. Somebody wants to be clean, be a help. Somebody wants to be holy, give a helping hand. Somebody wants to draw near Christ, don't discourage, encourage. Prepare, not to prevent. Number two, purify, not pollute. Purify, not pollute. In your testimony, don't say anything that will remind people of the dirty life of the past. Don't say anything that is so delicate that when people hear, instead of thinking about heaven, instead of thinking about holiness, instead of thinking about how to be purer than diamonds, they are thinking of Something that is tempting. Don't do that. You purify, not pollute. Polish, not punish. As we interact with people, understand. Children of God, that's what they are. Children of God. I'm asking you a question. If you happen to be a teacher... And the, one of the children of our president in the country is in your class. How would you teach that child? What will you say to that child? How will you treat that child, child of the president in your class as a teacher? Well, children of God. God is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the President of the whole universe. 
And now you have opportunity to teach, to help, to enlighten the children of God, the church of God, the bride of Christ. Polish, not punish. Make them better. Make them shine. Make them glow. Make them cleaner than they were before they got to you. Number four, purge, not profane. Purge. We're, we're ministering. And in our ministry, we're trying to help the bride of Christ to be ready. And you want your contribution. You want your part of the ministry to contribute something to the upliftment of the bride of Christ, to the encouragement of the bride of Christ. You want whatever you do to lift the bride of Christ higher, higher to glory, higher to the Lord. You purge, not profane, but five. You perfect, not pervert. You perfect, not pervert. As you interact with other people, you think about what's my influence on them? What's the result of my ministry to them? What is my sharing? What's he accomplishing? My action as I project and present anything to the church, what's he doing? Is it perfecting them? Or is it perverting them? Number one, prepare, not prevent. Two, purify, not pollute. Three, polish, not punish. Four, purge, not profane. Five, perfect, not pervert. Six, promote, not provoke. You see, we're preparing people to meet the Lord. And we know, you believe, I believe, the Bible says Christ can come at any time. If I truly believe, if I truly believe, if you truly believe that Christ can come any moment from now, and here is your brother, innocent brother, here is your sister, innocent sister, maybe she doesn't know everything she needs to know, and then you provoke her to anger, you provoke her to something unclean, you provoke her to misbehave. What have we gained? That's a member of the body of Christ. That's part of the bride of Christ. And instead of promoting them from faith unto faith, from grace unto grace, from salvation to sanctification, instead of promoting them, we're provoking them. Instead of gathering together with Christ, was scattering. Instead of making somebody to say, I will follow the Lord, I will never leave the Lord, I'm going to follow the Lord till I die, we're making them to say, I don't know whether I want to continue or not. The discouragement is too much. I feel at peace when I'm outside. When I come into the church, it's like, I don't know what I've done. They dribble me here, dribble me there. They provoke me. I don't know where I'm going to stand. Promote them, promote them, not provoke them. Number seven, present, not possess. Present, not possess. Let me show you what that means. Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 28. Whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. You know, the church is a bride of Christ. 
We are not to possess that church. What, are, what does that mean? You are a worker. You are a sectional leader. You are not to keep the church, the members, any of the members, as a personal property, possessing them. Keep them in slavery. Keep them in fear, fearing you more than they fear God. Trembling. Whenever they see you, you possess them. Then, it's like we have a master. That master has a wife. And then you happen to be a worker employed by the master to take care of some areas of the life of the wife. Either to be keeping the house, sweeping the house, either to be cooking or to be doing whatever. And now, instead of taking care of that wife, you possess that wife. And the wife is like intimidated. The wife is afraid of you. More than she is afraid of her husband. And she feels if she is not loyal to you, you are a worker employed by the husband to take care of that wife, to take care of some things on the wife. And you possess instead of presenting the bride to Christ. That's not right. Let go. You don't want a slave of come out of slavery. There's no more slavery. Even the slavery in the world is cancelled. Don't hold anybody as a slave. And you want to present the body of Christ and the bride of Christ, present unto Christ, holy and pure and chaste. The Lord will help you. The Lord is telling us that Christ died on the cross. He rose up from the dead. And it is now for us to be part of the privilege of preparing the bride, not preventing, purifying the bride, not polluting, polishing the bride, not punishing, and purging, not profane, perfect, not pervert, promote, not provoke, present as a chaste, pure, holy, virgin, bride unto the Lord, not possess. Don't make the church come into slavery under your iron hand. The Lord will help us. The benefits of the cross, blessings of the cross, we're here to possess the benefits. We're here to push up the banner of the captain. And we're here to prepare and perfect the bride of Christ. You're part of a winning team. I said you're part of a winning team. We're going to do this together. The Lord will bless your life. And through you, blessings will flow. Flow to the people of the world and bring them into the faith. And then through you, the Lord will perfect the saints, the bride of Christ in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Be a possessor tonight. Be a partaker tonight. And say, Lord, here I am. I will. I will. Part of a winning team. Part of progressing people. From tonight, you're ready to progress. Tell the Lord. Restoration is available. Tell the Lord. Full salvation available, tell the Lord. A new heart available, tell the Lord. A new spirit available, tell the Lord. Healing available, tell the Lord. Deliverance available, tell the Lord. Dominion available, you can tell the Lord. And say, Lord, here am I. Calvary must do something new in my life tonight. Christ paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All your debt, all your condemnation is suffered for that already. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And it's yours. Jesus has conquered. Satan is falling. 
Jesus is victorious. He is the captain. He is the conqueror. Lift up the banner. The banner of his victory. Push it up. Push it up. And tell the Lord, I will keep on preaching until sinners halt. Keep on persuading until the scoffers hush. Keep on persevering under serious harassment. Push it up, push it up. Push it up. Don't be under the feet of the devil. Come out from there. And let the devil, let Satan, let those all, evil, all those evil powers be under your feet tonight. Your victorious share in the victory of Christ. And preserve uncompromising sanctified hearts. Permanently upholding scriptural holiness. Pursue. Don't stop. Pursue. Don't be retarded. Pursue. Don't go back. Pursue courageously. Unstoppable, soul winning harvest. You have hope that is sustained. Hope that cannot be destroyed. Hope in Christ. Hope in the Lord. You will win the day. Come and contribute your part. In preparing the bride of Christ. Come, come, come. Don't let your place of ministry be missing. Vacant. Prepare the bride. Purify the bride. Polish the bride. Purge the bride. The bride. Perfect the bride. Promote the bride until you can say, by the grace of God, I am part of the team presenting the bride unto Christ as the chaste virgin. Commit yourself to preparing the bride for the coming of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. The conquering saints of God say, Calvary has paid your penalty. Calvary has removed your punishment. Calvary has removed your poverty. Calvary has healed your body. Calvary has delivered you. Calvary gives you dominion. And Calvary gives you power. The power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And Calvary has provided all sufficiency for everyone here today. You are a partaker. What are you? You are a partaker. Let your sorrow flee away. Let all your tears dry up. Because Calvary thought of you. Calvary thought of you. And now I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of victory. Thoughts of joy. And thoughts of healing and health. And thoughts of joy unspeakable. And your forward movement will become from today unstoppable in Jesus name. Raise up your hand and possess. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because Calvary has paid every price and every debt of everyone. And I pray you bring your people into total, complete and full salvation in Jesus' name. For the soul, for the body and for the spirit, Set your people free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that everything Jesus died for, 
on the cross of Calvary to provide for his own people, every brother here, every sister here, every young person, every boy, every girl, every student will be a partaker in Jesus' name. Take the sorrows away. Take the suffering away. Take the sicknesses away. Lord, I pray there will be total victory. I pray there will be total dominion. I pray we move on from faith to faith and from grace to grace and from power to power in Jesus' name. Every condemnation of the devil, O oh Lord, let Calvary cancel it from every life. And everything, every thought that weakens you, every thought that makes you to feel like you are just like a rat. Oh Lord, I pray, take it from your people in Jesus' name. And I pray that the spirit of the Lion of Judah will come to everyone right now. The courage to live and the conviction to live and the power to live given to everyone in Jesus' name. And whatever is your concern over your wife, your concern over your husband, your concern over your family, your concern over your children, your concern over your business, your concern over your life, I pray Calvary will bring solution right now in Jesus' name. You are delivered. You are delivered from the power of darkness and you are translated unto the kingdom of his dear son. Come into the sunshine. Come into the daylight and come into the deliverance of the Lord in Jesus' name. Enemies will not reign over you. Powers of darkness will not reign over you. Arise and reign. Arise and reign. Arise and reign. Impossibilities will become possible before you. All those enemies will be scattered when they hear the voice of the Son of Man speaking out of you. They are scattered from your life in Jesus' name. May this day be for you a new day. This month for you a new month. This year for you a new year. And this life a new life. And everything new, everything new, everything new. A new spirit, a new heart, a new decision, a new dispensation. Everything new will come to your life in Jesus' name. And the blessings you receive as you partake of Calvary will be permanent. And I'll see the glory of God shining on your face and shining in your life. Something has happened. Power has come to you. And you push up the banner of the captain. Everywhere you go, you'll be on the winning side. In Christ, you will win. Through you, Christ will win. Through you, the kingdom of God will win. And your part in helping to prepare the bride of Christ, your part will not be overlooked. And every good thing you do, you may not know, every good thing you do in preparing the bride to be ready for the Lamb, ready for Christ's coming, you'll be rewarded in Jesus' name. Mighty blessings be upon your life. Protection be upon your life. The goodness, inexhaustible goodness of the Lord be upon your life. You will ever rejoice that you belong to Christ. Lord, confirm it in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.